I'm not going to say all of you, but some of you may have said to his son that I wanted to turn him over to a reprobate. But you know what? It's good to have a brother. Not an earthly brother, but a heavenly brother. Sitting next to God, the Father, pleading for each and every one of us. What we're not doing what we're supposed to do. He's tugging on the Father's coat. Damn, damn, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's standing against all of us to be a reprobate. Some of us don't even know what it means. Some of us don't even know what you did to get to that position. But we have a brother in heaven that's calling our name when we make a mistake. That's an awesome thing. Amen. For those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke 22. And we're going to start at 31. But we have communion today and I'm See can I get through this? But the Father told me to let the people know and don't leave nothing out. Luke 22 and 31. And it reads as follows. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. I'm going to read that again. But where it says Simon, I want you to think of your name. And the Lord said, Whomever you are, Michael, or you, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may send you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. This is, this is Jesus. I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, I need you to go back and strengthen the brothers. Just for a thought. To be sifted as we. Webster tells us the meaning of sifting is to separate or as if by putting through a sifter to go through, especially to sort out what is useful or valuable. Now I know we got a lot of cooks in here, bakers. You know what sifting is all about. What does it look like to be sifted as wheat? See, when wheat is sifted, it is to remove the inevitable parts of the wheat. And that was a two-step process. The first step is to loosen the shaft from the edible grain, which is called thrashing. The second step is called winnowing, where the wheat is tossed into the air where the looser shaft is removed from the grain. The shaft gets in the way of the elbow grain, so it can be put to use. At the last supper, Jesus warned Simon that a test was coming, a test of faith. And, 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 and when he told Simon, he told Simon that Satan has asked to toss you around and sift you like wheat until the parts of who you are fall away. Yeah. And then he's going to toss you around like in a basket to let loose the remaining shed. My Bible tells us also that in John 15 and 1 Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch that's in me that bears not fruit he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit he pruneth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Malachi 3 and 3 says he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of gold and silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. God will discipline us. He will purge us and he will clean us up. Then he will purify us and then he will restore us. This kind of sin will take its toll on us. It will make us feel raw, like scrubbing our skin with an abrasive pad, removing, removing all the impurities and making us clean and white as snow. You know, like a man working with a piece of furniture, you strip away the layers of varnish as he works on the wood. And as God strips away
away each layer of varnish from us. We come out as pure gold. You see, some of the junk that we have picked up and carried around with us, as it is, as if it is from God, but it's not. It's actually gold and shag clinging to our legs and irritating our bodies. Have you ever cut down cornstalk and then pick them up and place them in a pile? The power of the husk on your skin, as you pick them up, you just can't brush it off. You can't get rid of all of the residue. But it's easier to just take a shower and wash it away and start fresh. A whole lot of something has been going on in churches over the past decades or so. God is very, very busy separating the wheat from the shed. When God sifted us, he is cleaning us up for his use. To make us a better person. To sift all the shaft of sin away. To make us fit for his kingdom. Fit to do his work. He does it in our daily life. And he does it on a great scale. He's peeling back the sins of his people. To reveal the true nature of things. The true nature of who we are. Yes, we watch the train wrecks of preachers today. And we wonder how many of them are still righteous. How many are still holding up the name of Jesus. Are they bending to the changes of this world. Calling right wrong and wrong right. Great name preachers are falling by the wayside each and every day. Titus 1 and 11 tells us whose mouth must be stopped. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. Matthew 24 and 24 tells us that, that there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and great wonders, insomuch that if it was possible, if it was possible they shall deceive the very elect. Have your faith endure the fall of pastoral moral failures of this world. Well-known preachers or political strife, pandemic pains, COVID pneumonia, HIV AIDS and such. How about disagreements, deaths, personal crisis and losses, and so much trauma going on in your life. Here we stand as chef in the wind and we are stripped bare. It's time to stop carrying around the shaft that God has stripped away. It's time to put away the remaining shaft of this trust. That something isn't going to work well for us. Things not going the way we want them to go. But we have to trust in God because he knows what's best for us. So no matter what you're going through, God is right there. We need to apply the bond in our life, which is Jesus. We need to return back to our first love. Return back to a faith that is sincere. A faith that has been sifted. A faith that has been strengthened and renewed. Have you been sifted this week? Has all your pride been sifted away? Has all your jealousy been sifted out? Has all the envy that you hold on the inside been sifted out of your heart. Jesus told Simon, I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. That thy faith fail you not when thou art converted. I want you to return and strengthen thy brother. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what you feel like, when God has delivered you, you need to go back and strengthen your brothers and your sisters. You see, Jesus did not promise to remove Peter's test. He predicted that he would fail the test by denying him three times. He was put in a similar situation as Job. But Job passed his test where Peter failed. Trials are to be expected in this walk. We will go through many hardships to enter into the kingdom. God uses these experiences for our good to refine our character to strengthen our faith. When we experience a test, it is good when the test that is with us, he will be there to strengthen us and intercede for us. 
in challenging times, reassuring to remember that Satan's power to sift us when he tried is limited by Jesus' intercession for us. Jesus knew that Peter would get back up again and go home and strengthen the other disciples. Another reason Jesus allows us to go through experiences of testing is so we can learn how to get up. Get up and go and help others grow in faith. You see, before Peter's three denials, he was overconfident. You know how we get sometimes. It's me, it's me. But you forget that it's me, oh Lord. You just say, it's me doing this. I've done that. He was trusting in his own strength. Remember, he was telling Jesus, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. But after being sifted like wheat, he learned that failure is possible because the flesh is weak. Sometimes when things are going good, we tend to think we have done a great job. But it's not us, but it's God that have done the work in us. Sometimes we have to, he has to sift us like we to bring us back to ourselves. Philippians 4 and 13 tells us that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Whatever I have, whatever I am, whatever I go through, I can make it through anything through the one who makes me who I am. You see, God is our all in all. And again, he told us that he would never leave us, nor forsake us. No matter if you fall, he's right there to pick you up. He will never leave you alone, just like he did for Simon Peter. When Peter fell, he picked him up. He told him to go back and strengthen the other disciples. He knows what's coming your way even before you fall down. He tells he won't throw you out of the ditch. Jesus won't throw you out of the dishwater. He's not like man. He will not turn his back on you. So remember when Satan tries to sift you like wheat. God is on your side. If your past has some failures, there may be some dark baggage in your life. Skeletons in your closet. There may be some betrayals in your life. Don't fret because you're still in good company. You see, David, he was a dog. Rahab was a prostitute. Paul tortured and killed the Christians. So if you don't pass the text, you may have been sifted like wheat. Forgiveness is what our Father does through Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Restoration. He restores us. And he put our past behind us. He said that he would cast all our sins into the sea of forgiveness. Remember them no more. When Satan comes to buffet or sift you, we must remember Ephesians 6. We have to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to sustain the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers and rulers of darkness of this old world, against spiritual wickedness. Our victory is in depending on God. Satan sometimes, he may come to test us, the Father of Jesus, but he still has to ask the Father's permission. You see, Peter went through a very painful process, and if you are in a process with God, that is difficult, and it makes you feel like giving up. Don't give up, and don't give in. Sometimes, the enemy
But God comes that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So no matter what you're going through, the enemy may try. But all you got to do is remember the Father that says hi and looks down low. He won't ever leave you and he won't forsake you. Remember, God is right there by your side. Discuss it. 
with you? No, 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 it don't happen. But we are blessed here. We are blessed that we can get to our pastor and our hands. And if you don't understand something, ask her. And she will explain it to you. Amen. To be simply as we be careful. Be on your P's and Q's. Because the enemy is slipper now than he's ever been. He won't take a sip.